Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. Today I'll be demonstrating how to create a boutique quality cake that you can make in your own kitchens. This is a seven inch cake board that I have stuck to a just a temporary board in the meantime, sticking my eight inch mud cake on top and then going straight onto the crumb coat. So there's not gonna be any filling in this. It's just a super rich, super dense mud cake. I'll have the recipe for the ganache and the mud cake in the description box below or in the eye icon up top. Smooth out your ganache, fill in any pockets as you go, and then continue to smooth until you're happy with the finish. The neater the finish on the outside and the top of the cake, the neater the overall look will be once we add our liquid ganache over the top. Bring the lip frosting to the middle, refrigerate for about 20 minutes so it's nice and hard, and then create your pouring ganache. So this is dark chocolate and heavy cream and it's equal parts so I um, for the other ganache that you saw me cover the cake with that is more chocolate than you have cream but for the pourable version I highly recommend going with the same amount of cream to your chocolate melt it in the microwave at 30 second bursts I took about twice to get it to this consistency and I already know my quality of chocolate for some reason it still has little pieces that just do not want to melt so I always sift it first after 20 minutes, your cake should be nice and set. I'm going to remove it from that temporary cake board with the seven inch board underneath still attached. I'm going to prop it onto a cup or a little bowl, something that's smaller than the diameter of your cake. You can center it on there, very important to make sure it's nice and centered. Sometimes it is easier to look underneath just to see if one side is a little bit too far to the left or right and you can move it accordingly. Take your nice and fluid ganache and start pouring it in the center with circular motion, starting right in the middle and then working your way out to the very edges. Don't forget to look around the whole cake just in case the backside that you're not seeing has some areas that haven't been covered yet. Once your ganache has stopped dripping, you can start removing any excess from the base. And then using two spatulas, pick it up. Hopefully your little cup doesn't stick to the base like mine did. And then plant it onto your um, serving platter or your display board. Clean up at the base, let it sit in the fridge until it's nice and set, about an hour or so. And in the meantime, create extra chocolate decorations. Into a cup, I've added dark chocolate and white chocolate, alternating giving it a little bit of a swirl with a chopstick or maybe the back of a teaspoon. And then pour it over some acetate sheet. If you don't have acetate sheet, not a problem. You can cut out a panel of baking paper or non-stick wax paper. I'm using a spatula just to make sure that it's all the same thickness and that the whole acetate sheet has been covered. Once you've done so, pick it up from either end, lift it and reposition it, and this will give it a really sharp, a solid line on either side. It sat on my counter for about seven minutes until it lost a bit of glossiness, but it was still flexible. At this point, I picked it up and wrapped it around my cake. I did measure out the panel first to make sure that it fit perfectly around an eight inch with maybe about two centimeters extra just in case. Set it in your fridge for 20 minutes and then peel away your baking paper or acetate sheet. For the top decoration, I've taken another panel and I'm just going on here with some dark chocolate. I'm gonna take my striped comb, press it nice and firmly, and then fill in the pocket with white chocolate. Do let your dark chocolate sit for a couple of minutes so that it hardens ever so slightly and that way it won't kind of blend with the white chocolate it'll all stay perfectly separate and the lines will be sharp pick it up reposition it so that the edges are clean and then after a couple of minutes take two pegs on either side shape it and the pegs will help it to stand tall without flopping over while that's trying you can add some edible luster dust onto your cake in just a line and then peel away the plastic or the baking paper from your decorative chocolate piece. Add on a cake plaque, which I think really gives it that boutique you feel. And then some blueberries, toasted coconut that's been kind of shredded up. 
And lastly, to give it that bit of elegance, some edible gold leaf just on the blueberries and also on the side of the cake where you have that marbled panel. A little golden candles look really good too. I bought these from Coles. And that's basically it. If you guys are looking for the plaques, I do custom make them and I'll have that link in the description box below where you can buy one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and that it looks the part. I think it did. But basically what it needs to satisfy the look, I think, is being a shorter cake, a super glossy finish, a cake plaque, and maybe a fancy looking chocolate decorative piece. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you again in the next one.